This lecture is about the JOBS Act and specifically about one element of the JOBS Act, crowdfunding. The JOBS Act was uh, passed in 2012. It was very much a bipartisan effort uh, from Congress. It was like one of the few things they could agree on at that point in time. It had multiple elements. And the basic idea was how to make capital more accessible to many types of businesses but generally smaller ones, with small being defined as actually pretty big, up to a billion dollars in, in revenue. There are many titles uh, or elements within the JOBS Act. The reason I have them listed here is oftentimes you'll hear people refer to some element of the JOBS Act or some activity as being title this or title that. And so you can uh, review this on, on your own time, but I just wanted you to have one list of them in, in, in one place. One big thing that the, that the Jobs Act uh, enabled was the, this idea of a so-called mini IPO, making it easier for companies with less than a billion dollars to go public. Uh, this is a very expensive process. Um, because it requires a lot of information sharing and, um, and also restrictions on how you share that information in terms of the traditional uh, methods of going public. So what this, what this uh, rule does is makes it generally easier. Sometimes this is referred to as a plus, Regulation A+, plus, which is a, a piece of the, the Jobs Act. Uh, a second thing is this idea of making it easier to sell stock by so-called advertising it. This does not necessarily mean TV advertising, but more that you can be talking to people about, about your offering without incurred, incurring issues with the SEC. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is this provision of the Act is limited to um, making sales to so-called accredited investors, making advertising. Other people can see it, but the only people that can actually buy the interests in the company or become investors in the company are so-called accredited investors um, who have a net worth over a million dollars excluding their home or have annual income over 200000 or 300000 depending on their marital status over the last couple of years, on average over the last couple of years. The logic behind this is that accredited investors are sophisticated enough to take care of themselves and therefore the greater burden of regulation is, is not as necessary for them. Now there are people, you can think of the people that invested in Bernie Madoff and other scams who would argue that even wealthy individuals may not be that sophisticated about investment, but that is the logic here. Um, another thing is this idea of being able to uh, to raise money without formally registering with the SEC up to a certain amount of money um, and, um, and then a, a trigger for, for registering. The point of this is again just to make life easier without the burden of, 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 regist of registration has associated with it a lot of activity and a lot of legal expense that a company will be uh, avoiding until the, assum the assumption is it can afford it more at a later point in time. Um, the idea of bigger credit unions or community banks is also, excuse me, community banks is another uh, key thing, mainly because they are a major source of business credit. And then finally, the all important crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding. We are familiar with uh, crowdfunding for things, like, like you see in, in Kickstarter, to pre-buy for a product or to get some kind of recognition for giving money to, to a company. Um, in this case, you're, you're actually crowdfunding equity, a, a bis, a, a, an ownership interest in the company. Um, the thing that makes this important is that it makes it available to unaccredited investors. In other words, to people who don't have wealth um, and, and then by, by correlation don't have, um, don't have sophistication about investing. This regulation, set of regulations was delayed for four years after the passage of the Jobs Act because it was so controversial. The, the problem is that it's going to potentially be easy to swindle people 
especially um, un unsophisticated investors, and consumer advocacy groups were very concerned about this. So there are a number of, of restrictions placed here. One is the total amount of money that you can raise annually, which is up to a million dollars. Um, secondly, that it be done via a so-called registered crowdfunding portal, uh, which is the organization that's going to kind of manage the paperwork and manage the disclosures and information associated uh, with the, the business doing the, the fundraising. Um, and this idea of total disclosure, that uh, investors need to know what is going on financially and otherwise with the business. Um, the amount that investors can raise is relative, can, 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 excuse me, the amount of, invest, of money that investors can put in is relatively small. A maximum investment of $2,000 or 5% of your income if the net worth is less than $100,000 or 10% if you're at a greater either net worth or income. So that makes it safer and less, uh, less likely that someone is going to uh, kind of give up all their money in, in wild penny stocks like was seen um, in the 1950s uh, and 60s, which is at a time when some of these uh, regulations also came into, into play and the previous regulations came into play. This is so new that the registered portals are just starting to come online. And this, this video is being made in July 2016. This is the set of, of SEC registered crowdfunding portals that are in existence today. When you actually go in and look at the different sites, you'll see that they might only have two or three companies that are currently raising money via the site. I think we'll see that change very dramatically in a short period of time. But it's also a cautionary uh, tale for people who are thinking about getting into this. We don't really know what kind of investors are going to be going into this uh, marketplace or the quality of the companies that are going to be going into it. So uh, there's a, definitely a buyer beware thing to, to keep in mind if you go forward with something like this.